Now, just so it's fresh in your head, I'm going to re-go over something that you did in Unit 1, uh, which was the difference between a proton, neutron and electron, and how much they weigh. Now, it's important, when we have an atom, the atom can be written like this. So we've got the chemical symbol. Here we've got the letter C, which stands for carbon, of course. Now, we have two separate numbers. The first one this one here, that's an awful arrow, this one here, now sometimes you'll see it at the top, it doesn't matter whether it's at the top or the bottom, the smallest number is always this number, so this is the atomic number. The exception is hydrogen where you might have it being the same, but the atomic number can never be bigger than the next number that we'll look at. So atomic number, sometimes that is known as the proton number. And surprise, surprise, that's because this number tells you exactly how many protons your atom has. Now, each element is actually defined by the amount of protons it has, so no other element will have a proton number of 6. Any atom with a proton number of 6 is a carbon atom. Now, the number on the top, I'll do it in a different colour, the number on the top is known not as the proton number, but as the mass number, as the mass number. And that's because this tells you the total mass of your atom. Now, if you remember, a proton and a neutron have exactly the same mass. We give them a generic number of one. So a proton has a mass of one relative to a neutron and vice versa. An electron, however, has a mass way smaller than a proton or a neutron. It's around about 2,000 times smaller, actually about 1,840 times smaller. Um, and so therefore, we don't even include it in the mass number, because all it would do is give us a, a decimal point with a load of zeros in there. So we just don't bother including it. So the mass number is actually defined by the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. And of course, from this, we can work out how many neutrons we have in this particular carbon atom, because the proton number is 6. So 6 plus our number of neutrons is going to give us our mass number of 12. So therefore, neutrons is equal to 12, take away our 6 protons, and that is equal to 6. So in this atom of carbon, we have 12 neutrons and protons in total, so we have 6 neutrons and 6 protons. So that's pretty basic. Now, how about you can have a go at this one? If I had this atom here, this is chlorine. Cl stands for chlorine. This is meant to be a capital C. Pause the video now and see if you can work out how many protons and how many neutrons this chlorine atom has. Okay, now I hope you had a go. Well, of course, the bottom number is going to be our proton number. So protons equals 17. Now how about our neutrons? Well, our mass number, so this number at the top, is 35. So 35, I'm going to write it this side, is equal to our protons plus our neutrons. We know our protons is 17, so 17 plus neutrons is 35. 35 take away our number of protons, therefore is going to give us our number of neutrons, and 35 take away 17 will give us an answer of 18. So our number of neutrons is going to be 18 in this case. Now I could also ask you how many electrons this atom is going to have. Remember that in an atom, so we're not talking about ions here, in an atom the number of electrons is always equal to the number of protons. So a chlorine atom will always have 17 electrons because it always has 17 protons. And by the same token, a carbon atom, remember up here, will always have six electrons because it always has six protons. Okay. Now it's important to note that this is not the only version of a chlorine atom that I can get. We can also have another atom which looks like this. So this is a chlorine atom as well. You know it's chlorine because we have the symbol Cl and also because the proton number is 17. A proton number of 17 will give you chlorine. 
However, the mass number here is different. Before we had 35 and now we've got 37. And so if you work out quickly the number of protons and neutrons, protons again is 17, neutrons is equal to our mass number, take away our number of protons, which is 20. And if we have a look up here, here we have a chlorine atom with 18 neutrons, and here we have a chlorine atom with 20 neutrons. So what's happening here? Well, these can actually coexist. If you remember, a neutron is neutrally charged. It doesn't have a positive or negative charge. So if we have more or less neutrons, it's not going to affect the electrical state of the atom. That means it's still going to be an atom of the same element, because what defines an element is the proton number. So we can actually have varying amounts of neutrons within a nucleus. And we uh, often, if we are asked to uh, refer to this atom, we will call this atom chlorine 35. We would just say chlorine 35. 35 because that's its mass number. And then obviously the one below is chlorine 37. So we've got chlorine 35 and chlorine 37. Now, there's an important term which you do need to know, and that is that these two atoms, so chlorine 35 and chlorine 37, they are isotopes. Isotopes. And so that is a term which actually means more than one atom of the same element, so here we've got two different atoms of the same element, so they're both chlorine, which have a different number of neutrons, or, the, or they have a different mass number. That's the same thing, because their proton number is going to be the same. So two, two atoms of the same element with a different mass number is going to be your definition of an isotope, or a pair of isotopes. So most elements have different isotopes, so different versions of the same atom. Um, some of these do have different properties. For example, the varying amount of neutrons can actually make an atom radioactive. Some atoms aren't radioactive and some atoms most certainly are. One example of that is carbon-12 is the normal version of carbon that we find. It's not really radioactive. However, carbon-11 and carbon-14 are both very radioactive. And we use carbon-14 in something known as carbon dating. And because it has um, a really slow half-life, it means that we can find out the age of certain things by the amount of carbon-14 that is contained in there. And so lastly, we can think of a few examples. Hydrogen is the most striking, really, because you know that normally a hydrogen atom has a proton number and a mass number of one, which means it doesn't have any neutrons. However, there are a couple of hydrogen atoms that definitely do have neutrons. So we have here hydrogen 2. That is known as deuterium. Deuterium. And that is because you have a mass number of 2, which means one neutron, one proton. And also, even more rare, is tritium. If you've watched the old Spider-Man films, um, Spider-Man 2, then you probably have heard the term tritium. Um, but tritium is hydrogen with two neutrons and one proton. It's not very stable, and so we won't find barely any of it in nature. And so I hope that's helped clear up uh, the difference in masses between protons, neutrons, and electrons, the definition of an isotope and how the atoms are actually different. Now, I'm going to do, um, I know that it's in the same chapter, but I'm going to gloss over the masses of the atoms and um, F1's least favourite topic, which is moles. Because they are quite hard to get your head around and they're so important in chemistry, I'm going to do those in a separate video. So please do leave some questions in the comments below or send me an email if you, if you have any questions on this. Uh, but I look forward to seeing you in that next video.